Welcome to the Abarcast Season 3, Episode 1. I am here on the Abarcast on the new platform, new studio, new environment. All right, this is a uh, process, but uh, I think we got it on point. Okay, I'm here with my good friend Alex, but before I, I, I introduce him, okay, we're here to speak about fitness, entrepreneurship, and humble beginnings. Um, just a quick announcement, guys. We have online coaching. We have personal training available. Please reach out to me on my IG tag. That's on my YouTube channel and also on Instagram Live. Alex, I know you, okay? But for the people that don't know you, especially on Instagram Live right now, okay. please introduce yourself. Tell me what you do. Uh, yeah, so my name is Alexander Gross, and I run basically a digital staffing company. So I basically staff people, um, outsource uh, from other countries and uh, I staff your company for basically one-fourth or one-fifth of the cost that you pay your employee here in the United States. Wow, nice. Yeah. Talk to me about your humble beginnings. Where did you grow up? Yeah, so... Were you born here? Were you not born here? Yeah, so I was born in New York. I was born in Mount Sinai, uptown. Uh, we lived downtown, Lower East Side for a while and then I grew up upstate about an hour, Orange County. I don't know if you're familiar. I am not. Uh, it's uh, Newburgh, New Windsor, Cornwall. It's kind of like on the. It's like basically a area that's on the Hudson River. Years okay. ago, these used to be like area they developed because these were areas that they, they, you know, New York City used to be all built out of bricks, right? So these were areas that they used to make bricks and set them down the Hudson River on boats, right? So that's basically how these areas popped up, and that's where that's where I grew up. All right. Did you grow up? Like poor, with money, how did that happen? Yeah, so I grew up in a pretty middle class, I would say middle class area. It was, I didn't come home to like a big gate and you know what I mean? But uh, it was like, you know, basically blue collar. A lot of my friends were, you know, fire. Their parents basically all worked in the city, right? Because it was a further, so I don't know if you're familiar, but basically in New York City, the, the furthest that you can go uh, and work in the city Right is Orange County. Okay, right. That's like a requirement Why for is people. That? I, you know, honest, because it's like if there's a fire, or there's an emergency, you have to get to the city in an hour, right, or okay. an hour and fifteen minutes. Okay. So anyone that lives, uh, anyone that lives there, basically works in the city, right? Because it's the cheapest place that you're gonna ah, live. Ah, got it, got it. Got it. Right. That that you that you can, right? Like so, for example, say a house is a million dollars here in Jersey or something like that. But in Paramus or whatever, right? Because it's 20 minutes from the city. But right. up there, you can get a house for 300K, right? Mm. So it was the furthest place that you can live, the cheapest place that you can live. So it's kind of like Copland. Everyone's either, uh, uh, you know, a cop or a fireman, right? So like after 9-11, it was like a lot of firemen died up there, et okay. cetera, et cetera. So it's like, it's, it's kind of like Copland. You All know right. what I mean? So that's kind of the situation. So I would say it's like kind of a blue collar kind of, you know, Maybe more white collar now with all the prices going up, but yeah, okay. kind of a blue collar when I grew up, right in the nineties. Right. So Alex was middle class, like you said. Yeah. Now you run a very successful business, but before we get there, mm -hmm. I want to know what did you do for work before this? <laughs> yeah. So and, and don't cap, bro. Like just yeah. literally go through the list of employers. So, like if you were like a stripper back in the day, <laughs> if you were a bartender, like so, tell me everything. So. Right, so like I was living in Florida. Like I'm gonna run back, right? Because I'm, I'm, I'm 36 right now. About to be 37 next month. You're young. I'm, you're in your prime. I'm, 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 yeah, I'm in my prime, but I'm fucking getting old. And uh, basically, I want. I could say I'll start at what happened when I came back. So I came back to New York. Basically, 21, 22, something like that. I had all these miscellaneous jobs. I worked at Louis Vuitton. Some mm. fucking random shit. I worked at Louis Vuitton when, you know, Kanye West was real popular, right? Okay. Toy, you know, remember he was real popular, rap, rapping the Kanye West shit. Yeah, it was all, all it was all Louis Vuitton. He all was Louis almost Vuitton. sponsored by him. <laughs> Long, <laughs> crazy. I worked there for like a year. There okay. was like he had his birthday party at the store, nice. right? Some crazy in the city. In the city wow. at the store at the at the main store. If the cameras could talk those days, the shit that they have recorded on those cameras. In Louis Vuitton for his birthday party, 
That's a movie. Wow, so you it's saw a, some shit then. It's a fucking... <laughs> people that I worked with did some shit. <laughs> 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 that, was, that was a whole movie right there. It's okay, funny. so so funny after Louis Vuitton, Vuitton, you were there for a year. What after mm-hmm. that? So after Louis Vuitton, I actually kind of bounced around. I was like a waiter, like everyone else, bouncing around to jobs, things and like that. And uh, server? Yeah, a server. Okay. Yeah, I worked at Buddha Bar. I don't nice. know if everyone remembers, but nice. New York City used to have a Buddha Bar. Uh, I worked at Buddha Bar, um, and then I fucking hated doing that, right? Everybody hated working in restaurants, everyone that did it. And then after that, I got into real estate. Nice. And basically, in real estate, I stayed in real estate for basically 12, 13 years until the business that I started now. I kind of still do real estate, right? Because you don't ever really get out. Everyone loves real estate. Mm. Um, and then I started getting into my business that I do right now. All right. So let me track back to being a waiter because I was a waiter. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I have this epiphany where I really truly believe that every person, man or woman, especially a man though, should – yeah at least be a server or bartender or be in the service business for at least a year just to know how to fucking grind and get those tips because at the end of the day a man at the end of the day a man is a salesman we have to be a salesman to you know in an interview for an employer we have to be a salesman to women we have to be a salesman to everybody yeah yeah. All right. So even even if I want to network with you, I have to be. I have to. I have to show what I can offer. What I yeah. could offer you, offer you. Yeah. Right. So, do you believe that every man should at least be in the service business, or at least every person should well, be in the service business? Everyone needs to sell, right? Because no matter what business you're in, I don't give a shit what business is it's in. And this relates to my business now. Mm. Everything is fucking sales. You could be a dentist. You're selling, right? Because there's a million dentists. I mean, it, it, it really doesn't matter if you're a restaurant, right? You're selling it, you know, you're selling whatever. So your people are only good as, as you are. So you need to be, you need to hire good people and, and be real good. And the place that I worked was Buddha Bar. It was a name, right? It's big in Paris, this and that. But the crazy thing about this fucking restaurant that I worked at, and I can remember this like back in the day, we, everyone would come at the same time. Cause I don't know if anyone's been to Buddha Bar, right. but when they come, they see that once, big parties, right? Because this is a big thing. People have their parties. It's at mm. Buddha Bar. And you know what we do, used to do for sales? What? Sir, are you the head of the party? Listen, what I'm going to do for you guys tonight is that this is a family-style restaurant. And I'm going to pick out the best stuff for you if you're okay with that. And then they would say, okay, sure. Pick out me the best stuff, right? And then, you know, we're all in sales, right? Right. So... We pick out the best stuff, and then they get the bill, say 20 people, it's $15,000. <laughs> oh, shit. That, 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 that's the problem with being, like, the man at a restaurant like that yeah. because, you know, New York City prices, you know. And this, this, is, this is, like, pre-COVID. I mean, pre-2000, not pre-COVID. I'm thinking COVID out, but this is pre-2008. Okay. Right? Pre, you know, before, the crash. before COVID. Like, I don't know if, like, the viewers know – but before COVID was the crash, right? 2008. And Correct. that was a shitty time. Right. But before that, everything was popping, right? right. The early 2000s was like everyone – Yeah, everyone was a G, right? Mm-hmm. So people used to come to the restaurants. They were stockbrokers, this and that. And they would come and, yeah, no problem. Do whatever. I'll put it on the company card, mm-hmm. right? That was a different time. Company right. card, company card. Right. So, yeah, you would sell because you want to go home with $1,000 as a waiter. You want to go home with $1,500. And in the in early two thousands, that was a lot of money. Yeah. So you know from I mean? from being a waiter, you touched upon real estate a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, can you talk about that? How was your journey during, <laughs> yeah. you know, the real estate? Yeah. Well, that's a funny story. Pathway. So I always worked in restaurants, and I really didn't know anything about um, like sending <laughs> sending in resumes. <laughs> so what I did. Was I took my resume, right? Like, this is, like, I don't know if people realize, I guess I'm dating myself right now, but people don't realize, like, you know, sending our resume is the norm now. But back in the day, you used to take your resume and you used to go to a place yeah. and be like, here's Paper. my resume, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, here's my resume. I'm going to, uh, 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 you know, and, and see if you can get an interview, right? Yeah. So what I did <laughs> was I took my resume, like I worked in a... In a restaurant, and I went to every real estate company. Uh-huh. <laughs> a couple of the companies that I got into, they were like, "How the fuck did you get upstairs?" <laughs> <laughs> they were telling me like, "Yo, how'd you get in the door?" Right, you know right, what right. I mean? So that that just comes with it. It's kind of like, um, 
you know, you got to be confident in yourself. You got you got to come through the door, but you got to act like you belong there, mm. right? You know, so so that was part of it, right? And that's some and that's something that that I think that you know people lose a little bit nowadays the confidence. It's it's like you got to feel good, and you just got to go. Yeah, you know what I mean. So from so from real estate, mm-hmm. okay, you got into the business that you're in today. Yep, this is an executive virtual assistant business. Mm-hmm. What made you think of starting up in an EVA? That's, that's uh, the virtual, yeah. So virtual assistant company. So what we do is virtual staffing. What made you think of it first? Yeah, well, I'll tell you right now. Okay. So basically, when I was in real estate, I was like, basically, what's going on? It's it's COVID. It's actually a little bit before COVID. I got into this. I started a, a, a credit repair company. And the credit repair company was like the thing that everybody, I guess, was doing at the time. Oh, it's an extra hustle. I'm going to make an extra 20, 30 grand on this a month. It's this, this, this. So I bought a course from this guy. Actually, I didn't buy a course. I actually spent $15,000 with this dude uh, in Atlanta. I'm not going to mention his name because he's like a kind of a big hustler. Okay. And uh, I got referred to him by a friend of mine that was purchasing uh, coaching from him for $100,000 a year. Okay. Right? And... Um, he, he was like, you got to do this. This is the thing. This is going to make you money. Da, 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 right? So whatever. I had some bread at the time. Here's 15K. Let's go. Um, so I paid for this. I, I got the credit repair company. Everything he sold me didn't work. Mm. Everything. But what the number one thing that he gave me with the course, it was basically credit in a box. The number one thing that he gave me was a virtual assistant with it, right? He gave me someone that was my executive assistant that did everything for me. She did literally my social media for me. She answered my email. She talked to the clients. She basically scheduled my whole day. She came up with ideas. She was like the most amazing person ever in my life. I mean, it was like it was like having a mom, but not having a mom. <laughs> well, you know so, what I'm saying? So, so, so she's doing all the work. So what the hell are you doing? Well, that's the thing. Like it, it's 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 a fucking life hack. So she was doing everything for me. So all I was thinking of was like, how am I going to get more business? Mm. What clients am I going to talk to? Who am I going to reach out to? Right. Uh, who do I have to talk to to bring in business? So that's what I started doing. Literally every single day, all I did was reach out to people. Hey, I got a credit repair company. Hey, check me out. Hey, uh, uncle this, whatever. Hey, talk to your friend. All I did, hey, oh, you have, a, you have people that are late on their membership? Or you have uh, people that you know apply to a rental building and they're not, they have bad credit, give them to me, right? Uh, I'll give you 20%. I'll give you 20%. I was paying everybody everything. Uh, and then the credit repair company started to grow. And then I was like, holy shit. And I still had the real estate at the time. Correct. And so I was like, holy shit, I got to apply this to my real estate. So then I started applying different VAs. I started bringing in more VAs. Oh, let me try this VA for this. Let me try this VA for that. And just for the audience, just so they can understand mm-hmm. the, the, the dynamic right now, yep. you had a top VA, number one VA, and when you started bringing in other VAs, they're under this number one VA? Yeah, that's a great, that's actually a great point. So you have your executive assistant, right? Yeah. Your executive assistant is your, so if you look at like, uh, uh, like say the king of the jungle is the lion, right? Okay. Your king of the jungle is your keystone, it keeps everybody in line, right? right? So you have your keystone, which is your executive assistant, okay. who should be the polar opposite of you, right? Mm-hmm. If you are like crazy, I'm, I'm not crazy outgoing, da, da, da. Mm-hmm. you want someone to balance you, right? This is like your wife, but not your wife, but someone's going to be like, sir, I don't think that makes sense, right? So you want someone that's the opposite of you. So what I did is I found somebody that was kind of like soft. That was kind of chill and would be like, I let me rant and rave and be like, okay, sir, but I don't think that's a good idea. And I'm like, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you can go crazy. Ba, 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 ba. And then all you're of a sudden. You're just like, yo, come the fuck out. Yeah, yeah, right? But if you have someone that's like you, they're going to be going like that uh, at, at the same type of level. Right. And then it shit's never going to work out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Having your virtual assistant is like having your best friend, having your girlfriend, Having your mother, it, it, it's really all in one. That's your executive assistant. And then as you go down the chain, I started 
developing different departments that handle different things. Okay. Like I got someone that was my real estate person. Okay. And then I got someone that handled my digital marketing. So like each department. Had its own specific VA. So, oh. so and, that, and that's what got me thinking like, basically I need to do this for other people, right? This is kind of something as an entrepreneur, if you look at what's happening in the United States right now, especially during COVID, right? One third of the United States has their own business, right? Everyone's an entrepreneur, right? Everyone's got a freaking hot side hustle. Right. Who doesn't have a side hustle, right? You talk to your boy down the street. I think the, the beginning of side hustles was like, yo, I sell weed. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I sell weed on the side or I sell this, right? But now it's entrepreneurship. Like back in the day, it was like, yo, I got a nickel bag. There's seeds in it. But now it's like... Yo, I got the side business. I'm a side consultant, right? And that, and, and it's the crazy part. It's just like people have side hustles. They're software engineers and their side hustle will be the consultant. So I was like, who is going to help these people? Because if you're a brand new business, you don't have the dough. You can't spend $50 an hour on employee. Okay. I, I, I'm going to be a little selfish here before I, I yeah. just, I don't, I don't want to stop your train of thought. Yeah. Let's say for the people that are interested in getting you know, a virtual assistant, mm -hmm. and they're in a scenario that you just, you know, kind of painted for us. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. they have a nine to five job, let's say, and they have side business. Yeah. If they get a virtual assistant, what would you recommend that virtual assistant to take over? That full time job or that part time job? That, I mean, that's a great freaking question. So it depends, right? So your virtual assistant is digital, right? So they're gonna be doing everything from the phone or the computer. Okay. So you gotta look at your situation. If your full-time job and your part-time job have 80% you know, or 70% digital, you're gonna want them to take over everything, right? There's nothing that they can't do, mm -hmm. but they're limited to what they do on the phone or the computer, right? So say that you're, you know, your side hustle is you're in e-commerce, right? And you're selling shit. They can take over the whole goddamn business. You know what I mean? As long as you set up, you know, the things that they need to do every day and, sure. and you work with them. Um, there's nothing that they can't do. Um, it's, it's really limited to what your, your brain can do, you know, as an individual, right? Like, what, what, you know, how creative are you, you know? Mm. What, what's your hustle? What, 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 where do you see your business going? That's, that's really the limitations. Okay. All right. When we spoke and we got to know each other a little bit, mm -hmm. you spoke to me about how important systems are. Mm -hmm. Why are systems so important, especially in your business? Or maybe, you know, if you want to elaborate in any business. So, so systems are the, the life force of your business. If you don't have systems, your business is nothing, right? So it, it, let's take an example, right? If you look at Jeff Bezos, right? Mm -hmm. He is the king of systems. He basically started out of his garage. He started with books, right? And he was able to scale this business through standard operating procedures for whoever came in. Okay. He has a massive turnover in his business, but every person that comes in goes through the same operating system, goes through the same systems, goes through the same training, right? So no matter what you do and no matter who you bring in, everything's running like clockwise. Mm. So, and that's why it's so important to have your executive assistant because literally with a virtual assistant, executive assistant, once you train them once, mm -hmm. every single person that comes in the business they will train, right? So you're only training person once, right? You might record a video. You might have some standard operating procedures that, that you type out. But literally every single person that comes in, you only train them once. Right. That's it. And that executive assistant will train every single person that comes through your company. Wow. And, and because, that's it. Because the executive is already prof proficient in it. Correct. And uh, training the... Correct. So you do it once and you never do it again. Mm -hmm. So you never have to worry about it again because that's your right hand. Hey, so my executive assistant, her name is Joe. And I'll say, Joe, I need you to teach this person about credit repair. Bring them in through the system, whatever, because I still have the credit repair business. I need you to bring them through real estate. And then I need you to teach them about the VA. I have three businesses running, you know, all making and money. She, and Joe is like your superstar. She's, she's Joe. The team. Joe is like... Yeah, you saw her. I called her. 
It's like she's already worked 10 hours today. She just picked up and said, sir, I'm wide awake. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, and sure. if you don't have someone that picks up the goddamn no. phone, when you need them to Yo, pick up listen, the phone. Listen, let's get spicy. Nowadays, yeah. even yeah. if you have a girlfriend, yes. you know the phone, they don't even answer you. Yes. Like, at least fucking Joe can fucking answer the Joe phone. picks up and she's married with a child. <laughs> <laughs> and I come first. <laughs> Her yeah. husband knows that I come first. <laughs> oh, man. You know what I mean? That's great. That's great. You know, that's, that's the truth. And that's the truth. It's not just that. It's because she has a passion for the business. She sees where the business is going. That's great. What, what we're doing is the future, right? No matter, like, people see chat, GBT, and all these things. That's still 15, 20 years from running systems. Yeah, they can write some code. They can do some things. But people still need to do that, right? right. And, and, and having employees that work for you for $9 an hour that can do anything that any American does. And if you're a small entrepreneur, hold on, $9 an hour, $9 an and hour, full time or part time, full time, 40 hours full-time. a week. So that's, that ends up being approximately what? $1,500, $1,500 a month. All right. So you have someone working for you for $1,500 a month that in the United States is going to cost you a minimum of five to $6,000 a month. Right. I have attorneys getting paralegals, right? Um, I have I have people, social media managers, you know, doing what would cost ten thousand dollars a month over here, working for you full time. I have video editors. Say you create a reel, right? You have a reel. It's too, they're char- over here in New York, New Jersey, and you know this. They want to charge you a hundred dollars an hour for at least for your reel, right? The reel takes three hours. It's probably going to cost three hundred bucks. Well, you have a you have your own virtual assistant editor right. that works for fifteen hundred dollars a month. That reel, I mean. You could create two or three reels a day because they're brainer. they're using your own template. They're doing the way they need to do it. Right. You now, know. How how does your business work exactly? For example, mm-hmm. let's say person X. Let's call him Little Jimmy. If Little Jimmy is is interested in getting a virtual assistant, what happens next? Yeah. So basically, what we're gonna do the first step of everything for everyone that comes through. Right. Regardless of what they business, because we service every single business, uh, is that they're going to come up with a discovery call. They're going to sit down with us, with my team, and we're going to hear what they have to say. Mm-hmm. We're going to ha- say, tell us about your business, right? Because when they tell us about their business, we're I- able to identify usually the weakness of their business, right? We're able to see what they're not so proficient in. We're able to see what they're missing. And we're able to see like where we really want them to go. Because typically when people say what they need, it takes them basically an hour to get with to, the, to what they really need, right? Okay. They think they know what they want, but as we start you know, asking them questions and seeing where, we go, where they go, wanna go, it's usually not always, they, they, they think they know what they want, but usually we help them get to a point where you know, they know exactly what they want. And then we set up interviews. Okay. After, <clears throat> excuse me, after we set up interviews, they uh, will typically uh, give them five or six interviews to go through the, 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 you know, depending on what they want. Say they want um, a social media manager, right? right. Because they're, they're super busy and they need someone to do their TikTok, YouTube shorts, um, Instagram, Facebook, whatever. So we'll give them somebody that runs all that, creates content for them. And does that for eight hours a day, and they'll be able to see their their body of work. Okay. And after they see that, they'll be able to, um, you know, you know, pick somebody that works for what they're what they're looking for. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. And if, if let me be, I have to be devil's advocate. Okay. Okay. So let's say I'm in a chat right now, you know, live on YouTube, live on Instagram. Let's say I'm a little skeptical. Okay. My first question would be. If you were to improve anything in your business, what would it be? If I was to prove, that's a great fucking question. I'm a, um, I'm a great podcast host, bro. Yeah, that's a great fucking question. Honestly, to prove anything in my business, it, oof, that's a great fucking question. Um, honestly, we're always improving the fucking business, right? Every time we have an issue with something, we want to change it. Right. And that, that comes from our SOPs. And I, I can tell you recently, we had someone that we gave a you know virtual assistant to we thought that they you know this person does a hundred million dollars a year in real estate uh, one of the biggest real estate agents in new york city obviously i'm not going to throw out names and um he got the va he told me hey 
I want an admin just to put, you know, bullshit in the computer or do my basic back end work. Mm. A week later, he calls me and he's like, I don't know if this VA is working out. What's going on? We give him, we give him, usually in our business, we do a managed VA business. Okay. So we say to our client, I need you to give me all the stuff that you want them to do because I'm going to have someone from my team shadow them and they're going to see what they're doing. And if we don't feel like they're capable or we don't feel like they're doing a good job, we're going to help them, you know, fix things. And we also do SOPs for our clients, right? So we're going to help you build an infrastructure for your team. So if you if you're a new business, we're going to help you build systems. The first week is free with us, right? Mm -hmm. So we build your systems out for you so that as time goes on, you guys have like a good foundation to work on, right? Every house has a foundation, so you need a good foundation that you build upon. So that's what we do. Well, with this guy, his company is, you know, it, he made it seem like he can't give out the information, right? Okay. So I let him go. Right. I let him run with it. And as time went on, I realized I fucked up. Because he started complaining that his VA wasn't doing what he needed. I spoke to the CTO, which is the chief technology officer in the company, who, who I'm, a ven I'm a vendor at this company, right? We supplied them with multiple VAs. And he basically said to me, like, this, guy, th this is not what he wanted. I'm like, what the fuck do you mean this is not what he wanted? He told me he wanted admin. No, he wants a fucking shark. He wants something to, to, to do uh, phone calls. He wants somebody to to you know, uh, set up systems, and, and that's not what you asked me for, right? So what I really learned from that was even if a client says, like, I don't want you to be involved, you always gotta be involved in your business. You need to know what's going on in the day in and day out because you need to have control. And if you lose that control, you lose the business. So how would you improve that? Like, let, you know, all right, so then in the macro, if I'm, if mm -hmm. someone random is hearing that story, they're gonna say, okay, maybe it was a communication issue. You know, like, how would you improve that? Then? Well, the thing is that you always fall on your sword. Right. You can never, whenever you have a client and you're always fucking wrong, you're never right. Because right. if you don't fall... Like a service business. Exactly. Oh, I'm oh, in man. sales, yeah. Right. If, if you don't fall on your sword... Okay. You always lose. Right. So you say to them, you know what? I fucked up. Mm. You're 100% right, right. But this is how we're going to fix it because you need to have solutions. So, exactly. If you don't come up right. with solutions right. with the fucking problem, it's just, then that's it's just, it. It's finger pointing and then it's like he said, she said. And so you know what I do? I say to myself, all right, well, I'm going to give you a fucking beast. I have someone that's basically the VA for Heinz Carey, you know, mm. the ketchup company. Okay. She works with the CEO. And I basically get her to do an interview. She's looking for a job. Okay. I get her to go on. I give her the interviews, and he's fucking blown away. I'm gonna give you a month for free. Wow. So and in, then you in, save in it. the macro. If you end up getting a, a virtual assistant, let's say an executive vir yes. virtual assistant, mm -hmm. does this in turn free up your time at all? Yes. This is like the, the number one thing that you buy. So basically, we say you're buying your time back, right? So when you're buying your time back. You're paying for a service that's gonna give you more free time. If I was to tell you how much hours I work today, work today, you'd be pissed, right? Because I have everyone doing everything. Uh, most of my time I spend is only on what I'm good at, right? So I basically hired everyone to do what I'm terrible at, right? I'm, I'm an outgoing guy, I like to talk to people, I do this and do that, I do sales, right? So basically what I did was hired people to do all the back end shit that I didn't wanna do. Right, the shit that I wasn't good at. I, I was terrible at organizing. So basically, your executive assistant and your team are going to be master organizers, and you're going to organize the shit out of your company so that is efficient, and that you can delegate, mm. and and basically so that is automated. Your whole business is automated so you can make money while you're sleeping. So and that's what you're the saying whole point. Is essentially, I get an assistant. Let's say do the dirty work. Mm -hmm. Let's just let's just fucking say that. Mm -hmm. So then that ends up freeing up time for me so I could brainstorm on how much, how many more ways I can make some money. On Correct. Time. So once you have your team set up, if you have a team of four to six people, you should be making a million dollars a year. Mm. And that's how you can do it. It's like straight up. If you have a team of four to six people, 
you're coming up with courses, you're coming up with a way to automate your business in any type of way, which we can help you with, you should be doing a million dollars a year. Four to six employees. What, our employees are $9 an hour? So what's nine times five? That's 45, right? So the price of one American employee, you have four employees and you could be making a million dollars a year. Four, five employees, you can make a million dollars a year. Yeah, and that's what we do, right? Yeah, that's, that's a fucking soft It's a fucking thing. life hack. It's a life hack. It's a life hack. All right, Alex. So we're getting to a point where, you know, we want to kind of close up shop. But I want to kind of give as much, um, you know, meat to the people and quality to the people mm -hmm. who want to, let's say, make a million dollars. Right? Yeah. So what I want to do is ask random entrepreneur uh, uh, questions. Okay. okay. And I want you to be as efficient as possible answering them mm -hmm. in a few sentences. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. first question. Should you go to college or is college a scam? Uh, well, college is... Nowadays. Nowadays, it's all about where you go to college, right? College is about relationships. Mm -hmm. networking. So networking, okay. right? I was fortunate enough to go to like a high school where I developed a lot of good relationships. It's all about networking, right? So if you're going to a college where you're going to meet people that are going to get you to the next level, it's great. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to college where you're bullshitting, then right. what the fuck are you doing, right? right? But if you're going to Cornell and you run into a couple guys that, you know, their parents are the CEOs of some company and they're going to be able to take you and, you know, maybe put some capital into your company, it's worth it. So, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's all relative, I guess you could say. All right. What's the biggest loss? Or scam you had in business? Oh fuck! There has to be one, bro. No, I've been scammed them. I've been scammed the a bunch. I can tell. I, I've gotten scammed, bro. I can fucking scam. Well, this is about you. You're the focal point. Um. Well, listen. I don't. I don't take it that way, right? So when I bought, I'll tell you right now because we talked about this credit repair company. Please. I bought this credit repair company a few years ago. Okay. I spent fifteen thousand dollars on it. I did not get one fucking thing out of it. But what I did get out of it was my virtual assistant that I started the company with, right? Mm. So, so, so really, you know, you can't look at it that way. You know, you look at it at the, as the glass half empty okay. and one road leads to another, right? And, you know, it's just part of the journey, right? Our journey is fucking up. Our journey is learning. Our journey is growing. And if you do not fuck up your journey, you're not going to learn from it. And that's just part of the entrepreneur's lifestyle, right? We spend money on shit that we don't make money on, then we don't do it again. But it just leads to the road to success. And if you don't have those losses, you don't have those gains that are even 10 times more. You need those losses. All right. Yeah. Next question. Were you ever close to being bankrupt or, or homeless? <laughs> that's a good question. So, yeah, I mean, when I... <laughs> <laughs> when I was, when I was, bro, you I mean, up here right now, so it doesn't matter. No, no, I know, I know. But when I was young, when I was first, when I first moved back to the city, right, I was living in a junior one bedroom in Washington Heights for twelve hundred dollars, and I was so broke that I was like talking to this girl, right? I had all these hand me downs in my apartment, and like you know, my fucking drapes were like sheets, like my TV. Remember the old TVs that were super heavy? Yeah, with the like, big yeah, yeah. I could, I, I, that's all I had. And this girl felt so bad for me. And don't get, get me wrong. This girl was some Brazilian girl who was an immigrant okay. <laughs> coming from Newark. So she's and, coming from Newark. Yeah, and she, like a third, she yeah, a third yeah, world there were, and I was so broke that she came to my apartment every time and used to bring me something. Okay. <laughs> she used to bring me like, oh, I saw these new forks. <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> so he, she used to bring me something because she felt so bad for me. Wow. You know what I mean? But, you know, it was just all part of the process. Okay. Yeah. Uh, next question. Should you work a nine to five in 2023? Uh, I think a nine to five is necessary. Okay. If, Why? If, well, because if you have a side hustle, you still need to pay your bills, right? Mm -hmm. And you still need to, keep, you need to keep moving forward. So if you're able to take that income and put it towards where your, your goal is, right. that's the future, right? Okay. You, need to, you need to put it towards something. Um, literally bullet point. How is the CEO daily schedule like? <laughs> oh, uh, you guys are gonna fucking hate me on this one. I woke up at nine o'clock, or I woke up at seven o'clock this morning. I went to I went to the gym at nine. <laughs> You guys are gonna hate me. This and is then, CEO like. <laughs> yeah, this is CEO. And then oh, I damn. I got out of the gym at twelve, and then I went to get a haircut at two, mm. 
and then I hopped on a call about four, mm. and then I went to go buy some liquor, and then I'm here. Wow, that's the CEO. Like that. No, I mean, listen. If that's you, it, it's all about automating your fucking business, man. You systems, gotta automate right? systems. If you don't have people doing shit for you, what are you doing? Um. Next question: mm -hmm. How to make your first ten thousand? Five sentences. Go. Um. How to make your first ten thousand? I mean. It, I, <laughs> In what type of business? Like, what are we talking about? It could be anything, you know? Like, right. You know, for example, let, let, let me start it off. Yeah. You know, um, the first step, find your niche, what, you're, what you are good at. After you find out what you're good at, you know, you want to perfect it. Once you perfect it, inside that niche, you want to find what... All right, so I'm going gonna, gonna to tell you how to you make go. your first 10,000. Go, go for it. So you need to become an expert in what you're doing, right? You need to you need to know what everyone else thinks they know but don't know, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll give you an example. In real estate, everyone thinks they know their real estate, right? right? But you need to be an expert on their area that they're looking in or you need to be an expert on the the company for a virtual assistant, you need to be an expert. Say say they want to, say they want to make a reel, right? They're oh my god, I need to make these reels for Instagram. I need to get my follow. All right, no problem. I'm going to get you somebody, but I'm going to get you somebody really good because this person in the U.S. is going to cost you three hundred dollars per reel, but I'm going to get you somebody that's fifteen hundred dollars per month, so it's going to equate out to like twenty five dollars per reel, mm -hmm. right? So you need to know exactly what you're talking about because that adds so much value. To what you're doing so once you know the value once you know what you're talking about you're able to make money off of it because wow. you should be able to make money off of your brain yeah 100 percent. alex gross guys bro listen cheers to your success i'll see you here again soon <laughs> after the after hours i just want to announce guys that we're gonna have after hours we're gonna have a little interlude maybe a half hour 45 minutes uh, maybe to scratch your asses and take some shots um, and then get some thumbnails, get some photos, and then we'll start the after hour show, guys. Um, but, bro, before we end this show one on one, I want to yeah. take a shot to your success. All right, perfect. I need, uh, I need more success. Please. How's Remy? Remy Remy's good. I love Remy. She's, she's a bitch, but I'll take her. Oh, we're doing a shot class. All right. Quality. Thank you. Quality. to a virtual assistant yeah to the moon bro mm. salute that's a wrap for episode one guys I'll thank you guys in the after hours in a few hours